And the truth comes out. I knew there was something hiding in there. Nat, that's why we don't turn them loose unless you got a really sturdy round pin. What a day, huh? All that talking about making sure he's right to ride. That's what it's all about. You have that feeling inside you like, man, I don't know about this. I mean, I think he looks good. Let me just push a little harder and see. And that's exactly what happened. I asked him into a trot. That thing started to bounce around in a way he wasn't ready for. And, and he got kind of rambunctious about it. <laughs> he opened up his, oh, I see what you're saying. Question was, should I stop there? I mean, that, look at him, he's quiet now. Should I quit there? Answer, no. He's quiet at the standstill, but he's been quiet at the standstill all day. It's getting him into motion that helps him break free. Imagine if you had just made the assumption that he was okay and you got up there. Good job. But what if you did this for five days in a row or ten? Wouldn't that be great? You know, he just wouldn't buck by the end of that 10th day or whatever, however many days it takes. And then you think, man, if he can carry a helium balloon around walking and trotting, well, maybe he could carry me around. Yeah, you have to go into that. <laughs> it's a good horse. Oh, it's a good. We got a dusty stick here. We're not touching him very hard, but it does make a dust mark on you, doesn't it? We're gonna try the other way. Got him going out this way. Set those boundaries. Get him going. There we go. Now his tendency is to freeze. Which tells you something about a horse. I'd rather have him freeze than bolt, like I said before. But it tells you there's something still hiding in there. So we gotta unlock him. There we go. Gotta unlock those feet. Decent that that. Crazy scary thing is okay. <sighs> what a day, huh? What is, there's a lick and a chew. Make some more noise with it. Get him into motion again. See, so he gets a break. It's not all sweat.
It's a little bit more fluid. Even his stop there, you see him trickle into the stop rather than slam on the brakes. And that's just another sign that we're getting somewhere. Is he rideable? Should I get up there? Heavens no. I'll give you an idea of how to work with your horse, not how to win the Olympics. Not yet. There we go, break loose just a little bit more. Kind of find that coasting into a walk there like that. Yeah, that's better. Just starting to break loose there. All right. Just try to break free just a little bit. And take another break. Yeah, it gets smoother, it gets easier. Little time. Time is on our side. In no hurry. Get myself in trouble. Now that was trouble before. We try to avoid that, setting them up a little bit better. But sometimes, no matter how good you set it up, you are working with a wild animal here, trying to tame a wild animal. Oh, that was good. A little lick and a chew. Nice coast down. You can see his head level, it's starting to drop. That's good. Man, if he could carry this around all day long, he for sure could carry me around. The only difference would be the weight. Now, because the visual is, I mean, that's way more visual than I'll ever be for him. That balloon up there. So the only difference between that and me will be the weight in that saddle and maybe my legs grabbing him underneath here and he'll have to get used to that too. But if this feels like too big a step for you, well then start with the tarp and have him carry that tarp around. Or start with uh, something smaller that you're comfortable with. Take the saddle off and work with the balloon. Walk beside him with the balloon a little bit. There we go. Got to unstick those feet. Crazy balloon up there. That's scary, huh? So one other note. Uh, this is obviously something we can't finish in one session. There's no need to make this sweaty, horrible experience for him. We want to end on a good note where he's calm and quiet and he's kind of freely moving forward. But once we've got that, we're going to untie and we're going to come back tomorrow and do it again and the next day and do it again until finally this horse just says, you can just throw whatever you want up there and I'll carry it for you. And at that point, then I think, well, maybe I could be that, that passenger up there. So kind of want to, what I want to see before we quit is that it's easy to make him go and it's easy to get him to stop and he doesn't bronk or buck. Kind of, it's kind of hard to get him going here. So we're not quite done for the day. Need to give him lots of rest. Do not need a sweaty horse. <laughs> Brush up some of those dust marks. Make sure he's not afraid of this stick here. Then ask him to go again. There, just a little bit. Just a little bit easier to help him go there into the trot. Yeah, that was better.
one more step. That's it, square up there. As soon as we can get those pieces done, we'll undo all of our saddle and gear and we'll come back out again tomorrow and we'll do it again. But in the meantime, there you go. We're going to spend this evening and this afternoon and tomorrow morning grooming him and brushing him and bonding with him so that the trauma of this event, if there's any residual, oh, that was good. It was kind of easy to make him go there. So that the trauma, if there's any trauma left in his mind about this, it, we undo it by bonding with him, extra bonding time. We've been about, I don't know, half an hour here. We need at least that much time not saddling and not pushing and not doing things, but actually just connecting with him and just sort of bonding with him and sharing our emotions together in a positive light. So he doesn't think that every time we do something together it's challenging will obviously take on some challenges like this. We have to if we want to be safe moving forward. Let's test it one last time here. Can we go? Can we pick up a trot here? Good. And we're going to try that again because that was hard. We want to end, remember, on that good note. If we're going to score it like in school A, B, C, D, we need to get a C. At least a C before we quit our day. We don't want to end on a D or an F. So ask him to speed up here. Good. Pat him, rob him. Ask him to go again. Oh, that's better. That was easy. Make sure he comes down to a nice smooth stop. Good. And we'll call that a day, huh? Save our balloon for another day. What a big day. Yeah. What a big day. <laughs> We ought to spend a little more time up here, too. So if he gets a little snorty about it, he can let go of the emotions here. And then it makes it a little easier to let go of the emotions here. Those are some of the things you want to consider. But you notice my energy stayed calm the whole time. I did have to raise my energy to keep him from running off. And that's pretty normal. You'll have to do the same. But once he's... Settle down just a little bit. Um, I can settle down again, and we're out when we're in good shape. Tie my friendly balloon up here. Now, one last note: Anytime you're putting something on the horse's back, including you, there is an element of risk. So please, please, please be safe. Don't push yourself into a space that you're not comfortable with. Don't push your horse into a place he's not comfortable with. You see me work with it slow and easy. You can break that down half again and do it in twice as much time and you'll still get results. Don't be in a hurry to start your young horse. Take a time, make each experience a bonding experience even if there's some tough moments. And in the end, he's gonna let you in and you have a true partner. Thanks again, this is Don Jessup signing off.